I know Sarah said she was joining us. Yeah, I yes. mean, it is 5.30. You have a quorum. You can go ahead and start okay. if you want. She, actually, okay. she did confirm. Yeah. So it could be she's having some glitches or something. Right. She did confirm today. Okay. Maybe she's stuck in a traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> not, li not likely this time. <laughs> Um, so should should we? It's five thirty three. Should we get started? Or sure. No? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So we'll go ahead and open the um, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and um, uh, on Zoom, and uh, this uh, meeting will be recorded. And um, the way the process will work is we'll ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to present the application. We'll have a chance for board members to ask questions. We'll invite members of the public to comment by raising their hand in the bar at the bottom of the screen. Right now, I don't think we have anyone in the waiting room, right, Carolyn? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I'll move on. Um, and uh, once public comment is over, the board will vote to close the hearing and turn off the chat box and uh, and then um, uh, we will uh, um, uh, presumably have a vote on the application. We always start by having uh, a public comment uh, opportunity, but again, Carolyn, you're confirming there is no one else waiting who would I can't make tell public there's, a, there's another person, but um, I don't know if they're here for the public hearing or for public comment, so it's, it's worth asking. Okay, is there anyone any here who uh, wanted to uh, address the board with any comments other than uh, comments related to the application that is on the agenda? So just general comments. So I, okay. what are we seeing? We're good. Yeah. We're not, um, we're not, no hands are being raised, so to speak. Right. Okay. And, um, and then just to clarify, David, sorry, and for everybody, we actually are not, have, we do not have the chat box available for people to comment. So if people want to make a comment, they need to raise their hand either okay, visually so no, or- Okay, so no, ch no check box, just hand right. raising. Right. Okay. Um, so um, we'll start, our, so do we think that the other phone number we're seeing is the contractor who is going to present for the applicant? Can we confirm um, that? I don't know. I see um, something that says Kathleen's iPad. So if that person is for the project, that would be great to have them identify themselves. And you are on mute. So I will unmute you in case you have something, if in case you can respond to that. So who, who's the other person who's watching we're asking? Um, uh kathleen's ipad is the way it comes up right but that person you've unmuted right okay resident on on norfolk avenue okay great thank you okay so we will have an opportunity after the board asks questions for members of the public to ask questions about uh, the application as well um so at this point i will ask the applicant to briefly present the application um, and um, uh, and I'd, I'll ask everyone who, who speaks um, in any capacity to identify yourself by name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. I'll also introduce myself, David Bloomberg, um, Maureen Scanlon and Elizabeth Silver are here uh, voting now on, on matters before the board at this hearing. And then Carolyn Mish is here from the city of Northampton providing staff support. Um, am I forgetting anything before we ask the applicant to present? I think. Um, to open the, um, by reading the legal notice. Um, oh, I'm, God, I'm, I'm, I am disoriented and, and rusty. Yeah. Um, so I will read the legal notice. Um, notice of this hearing was um, published. Uh, where do I have that information? Um, um, hmm. Um, oh, you know what? Your version probably doesn't have Yeah, I don't, I don't see it on my... Do, do yep. we know when yep. the notice was published? Um, April 30th and May 7th. Okay. So the only application on for tonight's hearing 
um, is the request for a special permit by Gerard Holmes to increase nonconformity for an attached garage with a five foot set, side setback at 28 Norfolk Avenue, Northampton, map ID 24A-152. And now I will ask the applicant or the representative of the applicant to uh, give a brief presentation or description of what you're asking for. Okay, I've never done this before. You need to tell me if I'm not giving you enough information. Okay, so, were you expecting your contractor to do this for you, just so we're aware? Yes, I was. Okay, so we'll um, we'll we'll take that under consideration and in in in, uh, in in helping you to the extent we can. But yeah, basically, just a very brief description of what you're asking for, the nature of the project, and the nature of the relief you're seeking. And um, and how it's going to differ from the current conditions, I think, is a place good place to start. So this is a two bedroom, one bathroom house with the bedrooms and bath upstairs. And I'm aging, and my knees are in bad shape, so I'm adding on a first floor bedroom and bath, and at the same time putting an attached garage. Um, the garage is the part that would be non-conforming. Um, it'll come within about five feet of the property line. Um, the, so that I've talked to that neighbor as well as the abutter on the other side and both of them said no problems. They didn't have any problem with it. Um, it's a non-conforming neighborhood. Um, my neighbor <laughs> On the other side, then from this, from the garage that I'm planning to put on, has her garage built within inches of the property line. So um, it's not like this is a neighborhood where everything is pristine and everybody's following the appropriate thing. It's a wide variety of houses and mixed, and almost none of the houses here are conforming to this. Right. Standards. And, and the, excuse me, the relevance of that is the standard we're being asked to apply is, does this increase nonconformity? Is it substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of, of the neighborhood? So, but I'll let you go on. Um, the, the other piece of it is that it would come within about 20 feet of an existing Norway maple that's in the back. Um, on the neighbor's property line. Um, and we've had an arborist in to check and the arborist is recommending that we, that we have an arborist trench at the edge of where the construction will be to make sure that, that any roots that are going there are cut in such a way that they're not damaging the maple or at least, you know, minimizing any possible problems with the maple. And the and maple tree is on whose property? Is that on yours or the neighbor's property? The neighbor's property. Okay. Well, mostly. It's on the line. Parts right. of it on my lot and parts of it are on his lot. Okay. Any uh, questions from the board? I have no questions. Maureen, you're muted. Yeah, I just unmuted. Thank okay. you. Um, are there any drawings, site drawings? I, I looked through and I didn't see that as part of the application. Did I miss something there? Yeah, uh, there, were a whole, there were a whole yeah. series of drawings, Maureen, um, in the electronic file at the Office of Planning, including four pages of elevations, um, a plot plan, um, a... Uh, Okay, uh, so they were not attached correct. to what you supplied correct. us, Carolyn? Right, so I gave you a link. I'd be happy to put that on the screen to share the, my screen so you can see those, if that would be helpful. Uh, um, I apologize for that. I thought I had done my due diligence, but I would like yeah. to see those if possible. Okay. Sure, yeah. and, and for future reference, Carolyn gave us a link um, and when you click on the link, it goes to the page. At least this is how I found it in her yeah, office. The link, the link wasn't active for me. It didn't go anywhere. So Well, it wasn't okay. active on the PDF, but, but in a prior email, I think is how I 
found it. But anyway, we're yeah, now well, we're, we're, we're going to be able to see it right now. We're learning as we go, and I appreciate exactly. that. Yeah. Ex exactly. Yeah. No. Okay. So, um, so this is the um, area where there's the um, showing the uh, proposed location of the garage in the in the back. Can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. um, and there's noting about five feet in the middle area. Um, the reason why it need, it's a special permit is because it's yeah, the this side of the property is completely complying right now. The opposite side doesn't need the 15 foot setback either, and it's 10 feet. So instead of a finding, it requires a special permit because it's getting closer than the existing nonconformity, and it's on the opposite side of the property from um, where the existing nonconformity is. Um, I will show you the other um, plan as well for any, everyone else who's um, on line here. Um, and what is the distance that is being by the garage is going from, oops, uh, what to what? On. Well, the existing the existing setback there is greater than fifteen feet. So the proposed attached garage is at five feet, but an attached garage actually could be ten feet from the lot line if it's only used as garage space. So um, it wouldn't have triggered a special permit if it were ten feet from the lot line as opposed to five feet. Um, because we do allow different um, levels of, I'm sorry, I think I have it up here. Uh, we do allow different setbacks for attached garages. So this is the plan, the um, project plan view. So you see the garage in the lower left. Um, and then I think in the relationship to the setback is further down on the screen here. Um, and there's another lot layout plan on one of those links that uh, gives a really clear depiction of the dimensions. Right. Um, sorry, my computer's being a little bit slow here. The one called lot layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, I can go back to that one. I had that one up. So that's the same thing. So the garage is only a single story and it's just for garage, right, Mr. Fitz? Correct. Okay. And I don't know whether it's relevant, the entire length of the garage on the abutters lot has large, tall shrubs on it that the neighbor won't even be able to see the garage from their yard. Do you know what kind of shrubs they are by any chance? Um, are they evergreens? Uh, no. What are the nasty things that are invasive? <laughs> well, there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's a common hedge. Uh huh. Okay. But I'm blanking on the name at the moment. I used to know. That's all right. It's not knotweed. Japanese knotweed. No, no. It's a it's a shrub. It's a shrub. Yeah. Good on this. You want to see? <laughs> yeah, we do a I site visit. Show you right now. <laughs> Get a yeah. site visit. How about another that? another handy uh, yeah. benefit from this process? So I'm trying to show you. So <laughs> it's about where the garage would be, and here's this shrub hedge that runs the whole length, and so they won't even be able to see it from their lot. And the I talked to the abutter, and he was perfectly happy with it. Said no problem at all. He's getting old too, and. He's gonna. The neighbor just said, "What do I mean?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful with what you say outside in the yard. He's a wonderful neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll let you patch that up afterwards. <laughs> uh, any other? Uh, Carolyn, did you? There's that. There's uh, Maureen. Do you see the plan Carolyn put up at? Yeah. Depicts yeah, sort of the footprint. This. Yeah. You know, again, yeah. I apologize for not having tapped into this sooner. And I can see that our applicant was assuming that maybe the uh, 
you know, contractor would be presenting this to us. So we're just going through it together. And yeah, it's very, that's fine. Very yeah, that's, that's fine. It's a fairly um, large uh, addition, right? I mean, if, if the, I assume, is that the bedroom that's 25 by 24? Five? Um, so the rest of the addition, um, if you start looking at from the front of the house, you can see the existing house. The little box on the side is um, is a sun porch. It exists already, and but it was built in 1971 and has jealousy windows, and it's in horrible shape. <laughs> so it's going to be ripped off and put on. Um, yeah, you can see the you can see the the sun porch on the there and then it's a garage it's not quite a two garage car garage it's a garage and a half is what the contractor described it as but it will allow me to get both of our cars into the garage when it snows so that the the snow removal guys can come and clear the driveway and not need to worry about the the cars in the way but um, Elizabeth, to answer your question, the, the size of the addition is substantial relative to the size of the existing house, if you look at these plans. Right, I and did. Although yeah. the only issue I think before us is really the garage and this, I mean, we can, we, we can look at the whole picture, but, but, there, but it's the, the only reason this application is before us is because right, it's the tree. this yeah. setback with the garage and the tree. Yeah, uh, got it. Or, yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions from board members? I, well, I had a question. Sure. It mentions two trees. I read the Arborist report that was submitted. Um, I, I think that only mentioned, I thought it only mentioned one tree um, and the pruning of the roots of that one of the Norfolk tree. Um, is there another one that- The other, the other tree is um, right next to it and is closer to the back so the only roots will be coming from the one tree that's closer because the other tree is actually on the other side of that tree does that make sense and that won't be affected at all then correct and so that's why the arborist doesn't address it i mean one of the things that you could do in terms of addressing that is just um writing it in such a uh, writing a condition that would just say that the um, treatment of um, the tree roots for any of those trees that might be impacted in the in the opinion of the arborist that could be addressed and that way okay. if there are some roots from that second tree that happen to be encroaching into that construction zone <clears throat> that that would cover it right Okay. I guess one of my, well, I, th I think this is more a question for Carolyn than Mr. Fitz, but, um, you know, how do you ever get complete assurance, you know, I mean, about a tree? How do, how do you build that in? I mean, whether or not the tree will survive, um, you don't. Um, I think there are ways that um, things that can be done during construction that significantly um, improve the chances for trees to survive any kind of shock from um, excavation. And I think the biggest thing is really when you um, get an excavator that just goes in and rips the critical root zone, puts in a foundation or whatever structure is going in, and then leaves without any kind of um, really addressing the impact of that um, shock to the tree. So having an arborist look at it and evaluate and providing steps to um, ameliorate uh, and actually root, what's called root prune, um, the uh, critical root zone area means you're making a clean cut and not just ripping out the root structure with an excavator. So um, that's been shown to um, be an effective way to address that. Okay. Thanks. So we're sort of relying on the opinion of this, arb this, ex this expert arborist, I guess. I know opinions can vary and there's probably no guarantee. Any other questions? 
uh, procedural, I guess, if um, the other participant in our call is someone who would like to speak on this, mm -hmm. I would like the you know opportunity to discuss this further after that person potential yeah. participant talks. Yeah, it, it definitely. Um, it, it's uh, so maybe if there are no other questions from the board, we um, we could ask the other uh, uh, participant who's joined us uh, if she would like to address the board and just give us your name and address and and just any comments should be addressed to the board, not to the applicant. And uh, are we ready? Uh, can we go ahead and do that, Carolyn? Uh, yes, you can open up to public. Uh, to okay. public yep. Are you there? The uh, I think it was somebody said she was a neighbor. She just left. Or maybe maybe she. Or is she muted or go, no? Or she, she just left? actually just left as a participant. Oh. Give her a chance to rejoin, maybe if she. Yeah. I'm hearing some sounds. So we're not seeing any indication that some somebody is attempting to rejoin or has rejoined? Uh, no. Hmm. Mr. Fitz, do you did you recall or did you recognize that person? I can't remember if we heard a name or. Well, it's Kathleen's iPad and I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't think there's any neighbor on the street named Kathy, although there is a neighbor on row that I don't know who just moved in and they have a backyard that extends the whole way over to Norfolk really two lots put together and I don't know their names. So they're like four houses up. Okay. And Carolyn, your office hasn't received anything either from neighbors or abutters, DPW, fire, police, nothing. Uh, DPW didn't have any comments about okay. this pr uh, project in particular. Uh, and we have not received any uh, comments from abutters or neighbors. Okay. Or and but we do uh, um it's not just immediate abutters that are notified it's um, yeah. abutters of those abutters so it's very you know could be someone who got a notice and wanted to ch you know figure out yeah. what was going on and maybe they she heard enough and didn't need to talk maybe next time we do this i should i don't want to put anyone on the spot but i could specifically ask at the very beginning is just for so we're aware did you you know did you can you tell us if you will want to talk but uh, i don't know maybe that puts people on the spot um, okay. Well, I mean, I, my only concern is because of technology, somebody wanted to speak and is, 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 might not get the opportunity to speak, but I'm not sure what else we can do right now. Right. Um, and, and except perhaps assume that she heard what the information she was looking for and was, didn't need to stay. <laughs> like when somebody walks out of the room, I guess, at a live hearing. Right. Um, is everyone okay with that? Uh, if we move on and I guess... Next, if we think we have all necessary information, we could move to close the public hearing. And Mr. Fitz, you're welcome to stay with us to hear deliberations. But I think at that point we mute uh, the applicant, right, Carolyn? When we after we Once vote to close, close the public, the public hearing. hearing. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fitz, is there anything else you wanted to add before we close the public hearing? Can't think of anything. Okay. So I guess a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? That's three. To, Thank you. <laughs> do you have to do the roll call on that? Oh, do we? Okay. So yes, um, how, how, I guess I'll ask, uh, do I do that? How, how is, uh, Elizabeth, you can, you have, yeah, you can run down the list on your participant list and ask, um, or um, I can do that, whatever you feel more comfortable. I guess I'll let you do it because I'm uh -huh. on my phone, so I can't see the participant okay. list right now. Sure. Yep. Okay. So uh, Maureen, how do you vote? to close the hearing. So I guess I have a question about me versus Bob. Should it be one of us, not the two of us? You, you, it's already yeah. you, Maureen. Um, he says it's already me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. I, um, I, yeah, I vote to close the uh, public portion. Is that what we're doing vote, right yes. now? 
Yes, yes just voting yes. Yeah. Okay, Elizabeth. Yes. And uh, David. Yes. Okay. So, so that's then, a unanimous. So, and so now we that's unanimous. Now we mute the applicant, but he can keep listening, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And um, and I guess either discussion and or a motion mm -hmm. on the application for the special permit um, would be in order. Are we ready to move? I would just say um, that uh, I'm completely sympathetic to wanting to have a downstairs location and um, and and this looks like a good plan um, again our only real concern is this tree uh, assuming that the neighbors are okay with the uh, change in the setback and the reduced setback um, and so I, I think you know we'll probably go along with the suggestion of making some condition on getting the arborist to um, uh, I, I'm not sure that the word is um, confirm unequivocally, but you know, do what she or he can to ensure that the roots are preserved and the tree is preserved as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just to, in, um, to clarify the um, there's a specific recommendation about what should be done prior to excavation. So you could just uh, merely make a condition that those recommendations are implemented according to the arbor's report and that they submit proof that they have taken those steps prior to construction um and, right, the, yeah and that's with respect to the root pruning and the right the report. Okay. yeah the, yep. the suggested language is the applicant shall provide a certified statement to the office of planning sustainability signed by a certified arborist indicating that root pruning of the abutters trees as described in the arborist assessment on record has been performed in preparation for building prior to the issuance of a building permit. In other words, that certified statement has to be submitted before the building permit can be issued. Um, okay. So, uh, and, and of course we can have discussion after a motion too, before we vote, but any other discussion or, or are we ready for a motion? Well, my only point of discussion is to acknowledge Elizabeth's point that this is a you know, very large increase in uh, uh, the building uh, in relation to the site, but the fact that there's the most immediate abutter uh, does not seem to pose concerns. I don't. I don't have a concern with this. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think it will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming single-family structure. And the reason I think that is, I'm just repeating what you're saying, Maureen, uh, the, or maybe expanding a bit. It's it's not uncharacteristic of, of the neighborhood. I don't think it's it's sort of a, a shocking increase in density or anything like that. Or um, um, so that so I I agree with you that uh, um, I would uh, I would vote in in favor, subject to that condition about. You know, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the certified statement from the arborist. Um, so, does anyone want to make a motion? Sure. Um, so, with that in mind, um, I would move to approve the special permit by Gerard Holmes to increase the nonconformity for an attached garage with the five foot side setback at 28 Norfolk Ave, Northampton, map ID 24A-152, with the conditions that, do I need to lay it out again or can we just incorporate what has already been said by Carolyn about what those conditions are? Or, or I could just reread into the record okay. the same sentence, do you want me to do that? Or sure. anyone can, it's at the end of the yeah. report. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Okay, so that subject to the condition that, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide a certified statement to the Office of Planning and Sustainability, signed by a certified arborist, indicating that root pruning of the abutters trees, so that's plural to the extent necessary, as described in the arborist assessment on record, has been performed in preparation for building. Thank you. Does that work? Second, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Any discussion? 
of the motion with that condition. So if not, um, we can, I guess Carolyn could take the roll again. Yep. For, okay. Vote on the motion with that condition. Uh, Maureen Scanlon. Shall I move? <laughs> no, I'm asking you how you vote. Are you voting oh, yay vote, or nay? Yeah, I vote with okay. okay. yes. Elizabeth yes. Silver. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes. Okay. So the motion carries and uh, um, I think that's it. The um, you, uh, Mr. Okay. Fitz can let his contractor know and then there's an appeal period. Right. And of course the work has to be done by the arborist. And if there are any questions, your, you could be contacted or your office, right, yes. Carolyn? Yep, okay. absolutely. Uh -huh. um, and then I think the other things on the agenda, uh, and again, Mr. Fitz is, uh, can, can stay or go, it's not totally up to him, um, but congratulations um, and good luck. Um, the other items on the agenda, uh, first of all, before I forget, we, um, there was some information circulated by Excuse Carolyn. Me, um, David, yeah. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. Uh, Mr. Fitz, sure. you look like you might have a question. So I just wanted to give you the opportunity to. Yeah, I wanna make sure that I know what to tell the, the contractor. So there's an appeal period after this as well? Yeah, he should be aware of that, but uh, before uh, he can, get, I'll yeah. let Carolyn address it. So you're going to get a notice in the mail about the decision and it will have the appeal deadline. So once the appeal um, deadline passes, you can obtain a mailed copy of the decision from the city clerk and then record that as the Register of Deeds, upon which you can then apply for a building permit uh, at the building department. But you will get notice in the mail of the decision. So. Um, before we apply for the building permit, then I need to have the arborist in. Is that the order of things? That's right. So you'll get a copy of the, you'll have a copy of the decision that will be emailed to you and I'll have that language. So you can certainly start on the, the preconditions before the end of the appeal period. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to pull a building, building permit until you met the conditions. Great, thank you. Okay, good, good luck. luck. Good Thank luck. you very much. Best of luck. You're welcome. Yes, take care. Um, so, so Carolyn pointed out in with some of the materials she circulated that we need to formally vote that the board, this relates to uh, electronic signatures by municipal boards, right. that um, the board recognizes and accepts the provision of Mass General Laws Chapter 110G regarding electronic signatures and that its members will henceforth execute documents either with electronic signatures or with wet ink signatures, and that both will carry the same legal weight and effect. Um, and then there's supposed to be a recording of that vote at the registry. Um, with, but but that, that's next step. Um, yep. So if, if anyone, if there are no questions about that, I guess we could just have a motion to uh, recognize and accept the provisions of MGL Chapter 110G if there are questions, Carolyn is here to answer them. Um, so any moved. questions about that? No. Oh, so, so moved, okay, yeah. and second? Sure. Well, well do you have, do you have <laughs> that wasn't heartfelt. Do you, you have questions or? <laughs> uh, well, it's because I'm navigating windows. Uh, oh. Yes, I just read it, I second it. Okay, great, <laughs> excellent. And do and I, I, t I assume we need a roll for this as yes. well. Okay, so, so you can take uh, the Maureen roll. Scanlon. In favor? Yes. Okay. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. David Bloomberg. Yes. Uh, so that's unanimous, and that carries. And then the only other I business I think is uh, we had minutes in Carolyn's package from April 9th. Um, okay. At five thirty and April 9th at four p.m. Um, okay. Maybe we can vote on those as a group. Uh, have, mm -hmm. have people had a chance to take a look at those? Yep. Yes. Motion to accept the minutes. Okay. And a second. Second. Okay. And then Carolyn will do the take the roll. Maureen Scanlon. In favor. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. David Bloomberg. Yes. So that passes. And uh, before we just have a motion to adjourn, um, are any other Anything else that anyone wanted to ask or talk about? Or do we know about the, the, the calendar coming going forward, next meetings? Um, there will likely be a hearing 
on June 11th, which is the first June meeting, but not on May 28th. Okay, June 11th, let me get that down. And I believe it's going, it's possible that it will be a 5.30 hearing. Um, I, the application isn't quite complete yet, so I can't guarantee that it'll be ready, but I'll send you notice. But the, the most immediate thing is that there's not a meeting for May 28th. Okay, great. great. Okay. Thank um, you. And, and then uh, actually, yeah. one other thing, sorry. Bob, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure, I, I, I take it you got all the correspondence and the, um, the agenda and all of that information? Yep. Okay, good. I'm, uh, I'm still learning, but uh, yeah. like everyone. <laughs> yeah, if there are any <laughs> questions about that or accessing documents, um, let Carolyn know. Um, because I'm, right. I'm, I'm loving having all this on my screen. It's, uh, it's like so 21st century. Um, <laughs> so um, I guess that's it. So I guess just a motion to adjourn then. Right, we have to do that by roll call too. <laughs> okay, so motion to adjourn. So um, second. Okay, and a roll call. Uh, Maureen yes. Scanlon. Yes. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Dave Bloomberg. Yes, thank you everybody. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob. Nice, nice to nice sort of hear you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> nice and, to have uh, you in there, Bob. Yeah. 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 Good to see you all. Everybody take care. You too.